Hello everyone, welcome to WestConnect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor. I'm part of customer success team at Tableau. So we have a WestConnect library. So all the sessions which are presented in WestConnect, they are all uploaded to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to it. Some great content waiting for you. Join the community, join the WestConnect group on LinkedIn, get connected with each other, learn from each other, each other and get inspired. And let's talk about what's trending in our data fam, right? So Tableau Public completed 10 years, right? So if people are not aware about Tableau Public on the cloud, so Tableau Public is our, you can say, I, I will just say YouTube or visualization, right? So if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for something to go ahead and see what Cap Tableau can do, just go ahead and explore Tableau Public, some great content for you, and you will fall in love with it. I'm sure about it. So in the last 10 years, 1.5 million data rock stars have gone ahead, explored Tableau Public, and more than 3 million visits on Tableau Public has been posted. So one advice I have for anyone who's looking to go ahead and improve his data visualization and storytelling portfolio, go ahead and join Tableau Public. I think it's a great platform for you to go ahead and leverage. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speakers for today. I have Agata and Riddhi Thakkar. Let me go ahead and talk about Agata. So Agata is a senior research analyst at the University of New England in Portland, Maine. She's been using Tableau since 2017 and is a Tableau public featured author. She's an active participant in community projects like Makeover Monday and Ironquest. And today she will talk about talk us about making the most of Makeover Monday. So without further ado, let me go ahead and Hand it over to Agata. Agata, over to you. Uh, Agata, yeah. Yep, I think I'm all set. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Sagar. Um, so, like Sagar said, my name is Agata Kedrick, and I'll be talking about making the most of Makeover Monday. Um, but before we get into that, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself. Um, all right, so we're starting with this professional picture. So I'll start on the professional side. Um, I am located in Portland, Maine, where I am a senior research analyst at the University of New England. Um, this is a pretty unique role within higher education. I'm part of the research and strategy team in the online college of the university. And we conduct uh, market assessments of new opportunities. Uh, we do uh, student experience research as well as all of the business intelligence for the college. When I'm not at work, I try to spend as much time as I can outside. Um, my happy place is the mountains. And my most favorite thing to do is um, to ski down them, preferably in lots of snow. So, um, in the summertime, I try to hike as many mountains as possible, um, though this was much easier done um, before I had kids. Um, I've also had a wide variety of jobs. Probably one of the most interesting was when my husband and I worked for an organization called Leave No Trace. And our job was to drive the Subaru around the United States and teach about outdoor ethics which is really just a fancy way of saying that we asked people to take care of the outdoor places that they enjoy visiting. And um, finally, this picture captures uh, my uh, what my life revolves around um, these days, which is chasing these three little people around. Um, here they're enjoying climbing rocks at a state park on the ocean near our house. All right, and with that, let's jump into data viz. So, so in this graph here, um, I tried to capture the impact uh, Makeover Monday has had on my skills as a data viz practitioner. As you can see, I was trudging along learning on my own, but after I started um, participating in Makeover Monday regularly, uh, the growth in my skills really took off. 
For those of you who may not be familiar with Makeover Monday, um, this is a social data project that was started in 2016 by Andy Krebel. And the mission of the project is to improve how we visualize and analyze data one chart at a time. So the project is currently run by Eva Murray and Charlie Hutchison, who every week share a publicly available data set and visualization. And then participants download the data and share their take on the data. Eva and Charlie provide feedback on Wednesdays during Viz Review, and you can use um, any tool you like to visualize the data, though uh, most people do use Tableau. So about a year ago, I was fortunate to be able to attend the Tableau conference, and I was so um, energized and excited after the conference that on the plane home, I made a long list of data viz and Tableau goals I wanted to accomplish. One of those was relatively vague, but it was that I wanted to get better at data viz. That goal led me to make over Monday. And after figuring out what exactly it entailed and submitting a few visits at the end of 2019, I came across Mira Omashankar's beautiful visits and saw how she had made the commitment to do all of the 2019 makeovers. Um, and I was inspired to do the same in 2020. So I'm not quite done with my year of Makeover Mondays, uh, but I wanted to share with you what I've learned along the way. <clears throat> so my process for tackling Makeover Monday every week goes something like this. Um, the data is usually posted on Sunday and I'll check out the original visualization and read the source article. Um, the article can be really helpful for getting a better sense of what the data is about and possibly what story I'll want to focus on. I'll then explore the actual data. Um, sometimes the data might differ a bit from what was used in the original visualization. So it's important to get a sense of what the data actually contains. And what I do next really depends on the week. Um, some weeks I'll know right away what type of chart I want to use and what story to tell. Other weeks, I might need to step away from my computer and just think about the data for a little bit. Or for, or for a long period of time depends um, and sometimes I need to do some additional research to get her to get a better understanding of the topic. I also try to pick the best chart type for the data and focus on on the story that I want to tell. If you follow the makeover Monday hashtag on Twitter or LinkedIn or see all of the Makeover Monday visits created on Tableau Public, you know it can be really easy to get intimidated by the sheer number of amazing visualizations created each week. Um, but always remember that everyone is running their own race. So I just try to focus on my personal growth and what I'm trying to learn or improve on. I also try um, first and foremost to do a good job of analyzing the data and telling the story I want to tell as best as I can. The great thing about Makeover Monday is that you really do have the freedom to do what you want and tell the story that you find to be the most interesting. So to make the most of Makeover Monday, I think it helps to learn as much as you can about um, data visualization principles and best practices. Um, long before I ever heard of the project, I had read um, Cole Nussbaum and Affleck's book, Storytelling with Data, and I would recommend this book to anyone interested in data visualization. I found this book to be an excellent learning tool. It was easy to read, easy to implement lessons learned, um, and I feel like my data visualizations improved really quickly. I've included a few other books here that I've read or that are on my reading list. Um, but this is definitely not meant to be a comprehensive list, and I'm always uh, looking for new book recommendations, if anyone has any, um, and they don't just have to be about um, data visualization either. <clears throat> so sometimes um, you still might be stuck on which chart type uh, to use, or maybe you want to try something new. Um, and when that happens, I find it very helpful to head over to Andy Krebel's visual vocabulary viz on his Tableau public profile, um, where you can explore all sorts of different types of charts and the best use cases for each. Uh, Kevin Flairledge also has a viz on his profile um, that has 100 examples of different charts created by the Tableau community. 
Uh, recently, Autumn Batani uh, created a viz that is a fantastic place to find a comprehensive list of resources available in the Tableau community. It lists all of the Tableau related challenges as a list of blogs, videos, and podcasts. Um, whenever I get stuck on something, I can usually find a blog or video that explains how to do it. So this is really a great resource. One other thing I'll share is something that I've only um, discovered recently. I had heard um, several people in the past mention that they find inspiration for their visits on Pinterest or by looking at infographics, but I had never actually tried to do it myself until recently. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Makeover Monday data set was super simple and I knew that all I would do was a bar chart. So I wanted to play around um, with design. So I went to Pinterest and found this design that I liked. Um, and from this design, I just created this viz, this viz with overlapping squares um, on the right. Um, I found the Viz review portion of Makeover Monday to be extremely helpful to my growth. So I would definitely encourage people to use the Viz review hashtag and tune in every week to Viz review. I will say that Eva and Charlie aren't able to review every single Viz that is submitted each week. But even if your Viz isn't reviewed, it's still very helpful to watch the session as the things they talk about may still apply to your Viz. And I'll note here that while there isn't a deadline for Makeover Monday, if you want to be included in Viz review, you do have to submit your Viz before Wednesday. So this is an example um, of the very uh, of one of the very first Viz's I created for Makeover Monday. Um, and here on the right is um, what I came up with um, after the feedback that I received on Viz review. So I changed the layout. I made the background off white. Um, I added some more space between the charts. Although now I'd probably add even more space um, and I added um, the bands as well. Um, since it's not always possible to tune into Viz review, you can always seek feedback either from a coworker or a friend, or you can ask for feedback on Twitter or LinkedIn as well. So I just have one more example of a before and after. Um, for this Viz, I received feedback on Twitter saying that using the blue color for the bar chart um, that shows the difference is a little confusing because it's also the same color that is representing um, the people who uh, found religion to not be very important. Um, I completely agreed with this feedback. I just hadn't thought of it. Um, so I changed the color to gray. And then I also made the bar charts rounded to more aesthetically match the bullet chart on the left. I was much happier with the final result. And a couple of days later, this viz was actually selected as a viz of the day, which was um, definitely super exciting. So when I first started Makeover Monday, I, I was completely annoyed that I had to use Twitter in order to receive feedback, feedback on viz review. Um, but I did it anyway, because I knew that feedback would be critical to improving. And that was my main goal. So at first, all I would do was post my viz on Twitter and not log back in until the next week. Um, but over time, I discovered this, um, this thing called the data fam is this actually amazing group of people who are so incredibly encouraging and helpful that they've completely sucked me in. Um, I definitely don't have the time to engage as much as I would like or read or listen to all of the content that is produced. But I have made some wonderful new friends, which I really um, didn't expect at the beginning of this journey. So I definitely encourage anyone interested in improving their data viz game um, to engage with the data fam, because this is quite possibly the most am amazing community out there. Um, for me, this has also meant um, saying yes to things that are normally outside of my comfort zone. And a great example of that is talking to you all today on BizConnect. So um, when I first started, I definitely had a lot to learn. So at first I was really focused on doing the best I could with the data of the week, um, tuning into Viz review each week and iterating my business. After a few months, I felt like I had improved a lot and I was much faster at figuring out what chart I wanted to use and much better at designing my Viz and Tableau. 
Um, but it felt like my learning had plateaued a bit and I wasn't as excited um, about tackling the weekly challenges. I definitely knew I still had plenty to learn. So I decided to be a bit more methodical about it. Um, I started a list of things that I wanted to learn, uh, but hadn't had the time to, to devote to learning yet. So this list had all sorts of things on it, uh, creating a curvy bump chart, uh, learning how to make a toggle button, and using Figma to design my viz. These are just three examples from a long list. And I just keep adding to this list. And when the new data is posted on Sunday, uh, I decide which of these things I feel like learning um, that week or which makes sense with the week's data. I definitely haven't tackled everything on this list because it is uh, ever continuing to grow. Um, but I pick away at it as I have time or when the data lends itself to one of my goals. So I realize um, this is much easier said than done, but I think it's important to say it. Um, don't be afraid to fail. I don't know if anyone's actually not afraid to fail. <laughs> I could be wrong, um, but I definitely know that I'm pretty scared of failing. So I, I could be saying, you know, just to, to be brave. Um, but when I, when I uh, was thinking back to how I had heard, first heard of Tableau, I realized that it actually all started with a failure. Um, I learned about Tableau because of a job that I didn't get. I had never used Tableau. Uh, I don't think I had ever heard of it before then. Um, and that was part of the reason I didn't get the job. So, of course, the first thing I did uh, when I found that out was sort of begrudgingly Google this thing. Um, I downloaded a trial version of Tableau, uh, made, some, made some visits, and then I actually landed the next job I applied for. And I'm pretty sure that at least part of the reason I did get it was because um, in the interview, I did say, you know, I'm interested in learning this thing called Tableau. So I feel like I often hear that people want to join Makeover Monday, but they see some of the visits that are created each week and they're completely intimidated by what they see. And yep, I totally get it. It's really intimidating. Um, some of the visits created each week are just ridiculously amazing. Um, and I have no idea how so many people have such skills or, or all this time. Um, but there was a really good tweet about this feeling recently uh, posted by Stephen Schumacher that I'm sharing here because I don't think I could say it any better. Um, but basically, if you want to get better, you do have to start somewhere. And you can't compare yourself to everyone else. And in a similar vein, um, do this for you. You know, I have a really busy life with three kids and a full-time job and a husband. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to take my, my career more in the direction of data visualization. Um, and maybe more importantly, I wanted to do, to do this for my personal development. I also knew that for me to get the most out of this, I had to jump in all the way and commit to every single makeover of the year. Um, this might not work for other people and that is totally okay. Um, this is just an incredible resource in this community and has definitely had a huge impact on many people, including myself. So uh, when I first embarked on this journey, I had a relatively vague idea of what regularly participating in Makeover Monday would mean. I'm realizing now um, how little I actually knew. There have been far more benefits to this project than I would have ever imagined. Uh, I accomplished the two main goals I wanted to accomplish. I've gotten far better at quickly deciding what the best chart type to visualize the data is. I will throw in a disclaimer here though, I don't always use the best chart type. Um, since I am doing this for me, sometimes I will choose a chart that I wanted to try or one that I think will look more interesting. Um, and I've gotten much faster at producing a clean, well-designed biz. But there have also been a number of other benefits. I've learned a lot of new things um, just by closely looking at so many different data sets. I've learned about cricket, breakfast cereal, mental illness, gender inequality, uh, just to name a few. Um, these projects have also given me the opportunity to be far more creative than I can be at work. Um, I've gotten to experiment with color, fonts, and layout, and different chart types. 
another aspect of Makeover Monday that I've really enjoyed has been getting to participate in the Viz5 initiative. Um, this is a partnership between Operation Fistula and Makeover Monday to raise awareness of gender inequality and to get people around the globe to act to end it. I found um, that I spend far more time and effort on these visits because the topics they cover are so important and I want to do them justice. I've also found that working on these visits is really rewarding. So um, participating in Makeover Monday has also had a huge impact on my confidence as a data viz practitioner. I remember at the beginning of the, of the year seeing submissions for other community projects like Iron Quest or Project Health Viz and not being able to imagine that I would ever be able to um, participate in those. Um, but I've participated in both projects and I even had um, this crazy idea over the summer to enter Iron Viz this year. So I hoped I would get better at data visualization, um, but participating in Makeover Monday has had a much bigger impact than I ever imagined it would. So I'm going to end um, with just a few tips that I wish I had known way back when. Um, first has to do with fonts. Um, so there are all these fonts available in Tableau Desktop, but that does not mean that they will display correctly when you publish to Tableau Public. Um, the tricky thing here is that it might look perfectly fine on your computer, uh, but when someone else opens uh, your viz and they don't have that font on their machine, um, the font will be changed to something else. Um, it, this might not seem like a big deal, but it's not what you designed and the default font could be bigger and get chopped off or become misaligned. So you're pretty safe using uh, the web safe fonts that Tableau has listed in their knowledge base. Um, the safest font to use though is anything in the Tableau font family. Um, but, and, and so if you wanna be creative and use different fonts, um, you do have to import those as images. So the next um, tip has to do with the phone layout. Um, and I made a little video here showing this. So when you create a Tableau dashboard, um, Tableau automatically creates a phone layout. But when you click on the phone layout, it rarely looks good without some tweaking. So always check the phone layout before you publish. Or another option is to just delete the phone layout, which I actually do pretty often. Um, next step is, or next tip is to keep things simple. Um, less is definitely more. You don't need to throw in a bunch of photos or icons or a bunch of different charts. Um, just pick a narrative and illustrate it well. All right. Um, and next has to do with color. So you color with purpose and sparingly. Um, I remember this is probably one of the very first things I learned um, about data viz from storytelling with data. So I try to just use one or two colors in a viz, but I also love um, trying out new colors. There's a lot of different websites where you can find inspiration for different colors. Um, and you, if you find the hex codes of those colors, you can add them to your Tableau preferences folder, and then you'll have them in your color options in Tableau. But another neat trick I learned uh, recently is if you want to just use a color on the fly, um, all you have to do is click um, on color, then double click the dimension, and this little window pops up, and then you just use the color picker, and you can use any color you'd like, which is super easy and handy. Um, <clears throat> another thing I learned relatively early is how important it is to clean up your tooltips. Um, you have spent all this time creating a beautiful informative viz, and then you hover over a mark, and there's this messy tooltip that doesn't make any sense. Um, so cleaning up the tooltip is super easy and it just brings your whole viz um, to another level. Also clean up those decimal points. Um, you rarely need the detail of going to do two decimal points and it helps your viz look cleaner if you just don't include any, um, especially on the axis. There might be times you need the detail of one or two decimal points, uh, but just make sure to make those decisions consciously. 
And then my favorite tip is to add white space. Um, this is something I've picked up from following amazing designers like you did Becker. And I feel like I could still add far more white space than I do. Um, there's just something um, more pleasing about a viz that has plenty of breathing room. And with that, I will wrap up. Uh, I am always happy to answer any questions and you can find me on Twitter at Agataviz. Thank you. Thank you, Agata, for sharing your motivation and inspiration uh, with respect to Makeover Monday. So let me go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Uh, her name is Riti Tucker. So Riti is working as a business analyst and she is passionate about data. She looks for ways to make use of data to create dashboards, which are helpful to the end users. In her free time, she enjoys learning new stuff. It may be new features, techniques, new tools, or languages. So without further ado, Riddhi, I will hand it over to you. Um, hi, Sagar. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, let me quickly start sharing the screen. Just a second. No, no problem. Um, Sagar, I need to restart the WebEx to share my screen. Uh, I'll just log in in a second. Okay. I, I think I can go ahead and ask Agata some of the questions. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. so Agata, we have a question for you. Let me just go ahead and read it. Uh, so Palak is asking, typically, how long does it take for you to implement the idea into a database? And what are your focus points since you always come up with the best minimalistic ideas conveying the insights? Ah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it really depends on the week. Um, some weeks, the idea, it, you know, it depends on the data as well. Sometimes the, the idea will come to me really quickly. Um, like, like the bar chart I showed last week, I just knew I wanted to do a bar chart. I felt like that was going to be the best, um, way to show the data. And then, you know, we do so many bar charts at work. I wanted to kind of spice it up. So I just kind of looked around on Pinterest um, for the for the new de kind of unique design that I came up with. Um, so I don't know. It, it, that's a hard question because it varies so much. Sometimes it'll be super fast and sometimes it'll take me days. Um, so it really, really depends. And and I have one question for you, Agata. What's your motivation to participate in Makeover Monday? <laughs> What what takes it to participate every week in Makeover Monday? Yeah, so originally, you know, I, I was just so excited um, after the Tableau conference, um, and I really wanted to just improve a lot. And I knew that um, for me, I kind of have to, <laughs> I guess, kind of like go big. So I just committed to the entire year. Um, and it's, it's been hard. Um, there's definitely been ups and downs some weeks. Um, and you could probably, I could probably tell you just by looking at the visits, some weeks I was not motivated at all. Um, but it kind of has helped with, with the list. I, I mentioned when I created a list of goals, um, that's kind of helped me stay motivated. So I just kind of, in, some of them are just, you know, little things like I had never made a toggle button. So I decided one week to, I'm going to learn how to make a toggle button and I'll make a viz around that. So just kind of coming up with new ways to stay motivated. Um, but it's definitely been up and down. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Riti, over to you. Okay. Um, so first of all, sorry for the glitch. Um, and thank you, Sagar, Divya, and the entire Viz Connect team for giving me this opportunity. 
Uh, and Agatha, just to uh, reiterate that the presentation was just awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. And um, quickly starting uh, my presentation. So you're able to see my screen, correct? Um, so uh, yes, with you, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Sagar. Uh, so for uh, me to start with, um, I started my journey uh, for Tableau in par by participating in Mikor Monday. So Agatha just helped us uh, understand how Mikor Monday works completely. So uh, everybody, I would encourage everybody to participate and learn more uh, by participating in Mikor Monday. Uh, I am currently a regular participant in Project HealthWiz and Iron Quest. So these are monthly projects. These are monthly challenges which uh, run across Twitter. So you can participate and uh, learn every day, learn new things, uh, get inspired. So just go out and start visiting. Uh, for the other thing that I am also a Tableau public featured author. Um, so that's about me. And when we talk about my interests, so. Uh, like Sagar um, just gave a small introduction about me. So I love creating visas and dashboards. It's just that uh, with so many things going on in life, uh, you always do not get time, but I enjoy doing that. Um, and then the next thing is that um, I, 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 you know, I, I find data and then I start analyzing it. Uh, even if there's something missing or if, if there's no data, I try to go back in the history and see that what has happened or what had happened, uh, which I can find and analyze. So I like that peaking stuff. And then um, I, you know, I like to learn and explore more things, uh, new things every day or every, I mean, whenever I get a chance. Uh, so for me, coming from HR background, learning the technical things, the technical languages, was really tough, but I gave it a shot and then uh, with more practice, with more motivation and encouragement, um, I was able to do it. And today I am where I am because of learning and because of uh, being passionate about a particular thing. So these were the blue lines <laughs> where I am very interested in the technical stuff, uh, but I'm not so nerdy and I also love to listen to music. Um, I am. I mean, I know how to cook, so uh, that's one of my points to experiment with my cooking skills now. So yeah, I do that in my free time and I like to travel to new places. So yeah, that's it about me. Uh, for today's session, what we'll be doing is, um, while I was working, I had faced uh, a few of my um, users asking me for some of those things or some of those cases related to dates. Uh, and I would like to go ahead and share those um, experiences with you so that you guys can quickly know. Okay, so the first thing is that, uh, so this, this, is, this is a basic simple calendar uh, from a date field. Um, for me, initially, when I was thinking about a calendar, uh, when I was asked that, can you create a calendar which can quickly show us what's going on in a particular month? Uh, and I was like, okay, let me think. And then I had to Google what's going on and how it works. So if you see this calendar, um, this is for April 2015. If you see that this is the year of order date, and then this is the month of order date, you can go back and then filter and then you can change the year if you want. So what this calendar is showing is the quantity uh, of the of the products basically on from in, in the month of January. So it was two, uh, I mean, on Friday, on 3rd of Jan 2014, it was two and then later on it went up and then down again. So you see the blue colors or the grayish blue colors have the higher numbers. So that's how the scale has been defined. Let's quickly jump and see how do we create this calendar. So for me, when I started, um, I'll say, let's pick up an uh, order date. So how, so how a calendar usually works is you have the days on the top. And then these are basically the weeks of a month. So now you get an idea that how do I want to put my columns and rows? So basically the columns have the date. So you go to more, click on custom, and then say weekdays, and then click OK. So now this is what you get as days. And then you again pull in the order date, have 
the same custom field, the custom date, and then say week numbers. So now you get the week numbers. Now what this is doing is this is um, showing you the days uh, and the weeks for the entire year or for all the years. What I would like to do is I would like to filter it out. I would say just for 2014 and now it's showing only 2014. Um, I would say let's bring in the order date to the text and then make it a day so that it just shows that specific date of uh, the year or the month and then um, let me bring in the order date to the filters again and now select the month so there you go you can see entire view and then um, you can say circles so what you can then you can start placing or managing your labels uh, just adjust the size of the circle um, if you want, you can make it square, you can make it circle, whatever you like. Um, you can hide this. So this is what you've done. And then now, so what? How, how did I bring those colors? So if I bring in quantity on colors, this is what I get. And then you can bring in the quantity on the labels. So what you could do is you could just change the size you can just bring this down and then you can just resize this you can make it 14 and then then click okay so you see this this is the date now you can change the color scheme however you like <clears throat> you can make it sunrise sunset diverging I would say if the if the quantity is more, I would not want to have it as a red. I would want and the quantity is less to show it as red. So I just reversed it and this is how it looks. Um, you can just reformat the days. So if you just right click and then say format, um, you can just name it full name and abbreviation or just the first letter. So that's how you create a simple basic calendar. Um, you can show the filters and then you can start, you know, uh, filtering out and then uh, you can say that, okay, now for January, I would just want to show it for April, no, not for April. So that's how you can play around with this simple um, calendar. The only thing is that uh, this calendar would show the records or the days only where uh, we have a, a, a record in the system. So if they do not have data, for maybe 9th of a particular month or 9th of April. So this would not show, this would show as blank. So if you would want to do it, you might want you may want to create a separate Excel with this date from starting from 1st of January till the last day of the year. And then just right join this so that you can bring in all the data or all the missing days here. So this was my first example. I hope this works for you guys. Um, the next is this example. So the, the other thing which I usually faced was when I created a dashboard or a report, I went ahead and showed it in years. Um, so, or maybe I would like to show it in quarters maybe. And then my user used to come back and say that, hey, Riddhi, can you please change this to an, uh, show, it, show it in quarters? Or can you show it in months to me? Um, I know that this is this is possible when you have that plus sign and minus sign which Tableau provides, but the user experience with that plus and minus sign sometimes disturbs uh, or is not comfortable. So this is one way where you can allow the user to select their time period uh, of that particular date field. Let's see how we can do it. Um, so this was recently, um, I mean, this this particular, um, you would say the particular trick or the particular uh, feature has been shown and uh, blocked by a lot of uh, great wizards and great uh, people. So you can go and read those blogs as well, but I'll just show you how I implemented it. So for now I'll say ship date. Okay, so I have the ship date. So what I'll do is uh, first I'll create a parameter where I'll say that select a time 
in interval and then i'll make it a string make it a list and then i'll say year and then i'll say quarter and then i'll say month so you can go till date you can go you can add in weeks as well it's all up to you whatever is the ask but for now i'm just using these three i'll take the ship date here and what i do is right click on the ship date go to create and then create a custom date again uh, what I'll do is I'll select years and be, make sure that you select date value and click OK. Now this is creating a separate calculated field for you. What this calculated field is, if you just click describe, this is just truncating our dates to the year of that particular, uh, the, the first day of the year basically. So that's how uh, this calculated field works for us and that's what we'll use for this exercise then i go and say quarters since i have added that as the parameter and then i'll also add custom date and then i'll say months so i'll click ok now i have my calculated fields ready or uh, the date fields ready and then i have my parameter now i'll bring everything together in one calculated field so i'll say selected ship date what I'll do is I'll write a case statement, say time periods. So um, I'm using a case statement. If you are comfortable using uh, an if else statement or if you are comfortable using any other thing, rather case or if else statement is both going parallelly. So whichever works for you, uh, you can use that. For me, I'm just using uh, case for now. And then I say, then it's water then should take quarters and when i say um month and then i'll say ship date months and then i'll just end this and then so this is valid great i'll just say okay now i'll pull up this ship date here and i'll make this as an exact date then i need to make it a discrete date what this is doing is it is bringing up just the truncated part here now you can select anything if you want profit you can bring in profit here and then say entire view we'll say show the parameter so now you can just control your chart using this parameter here so now if you see um this is formatted basically the date is formatted you can select any date format which you are comfortable with and then um, you can just play with this. So if you see here, year, so we had uh, these five years. So you'll say 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18. When you say quarters, you'll just see it for the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth of the 2014. Then again, first, fourth, seventh, and tenth of the next year. So that's how you see it by quarter. And then if you'd like to see it by months, this is how it looks like so i mean this is this is and then you can change the color add the labels format the so you can go ahead and format the axis so let's say let's make it thousand so that it looks good so see how this is this is changed and the user experience adds up to the entire views now so this is one easy way where you can allow the user to select a time interval they wish for and allow them to play. So yeah, this was um, the second example or the second case from my side. Let's go to the last case. Uh, this is an interesting one and I recently applied this to one of my visits as well, um, but I wanted to show this to you as well. So um, what, what I usually face is now if I have this huge range of uh, date here with all those metrics here or all those lines here, all those data points here. Uh, I like seeing this, but then now if I want to deep dive and analyze, how do I do that? Um, what this is doing is if you click on a particular range, it will just zoom into that range and voila, this is working for me. Wow, this I can see that, okay, this was a dip here and then this is a high here. If I click back, it comes back or refreshes to its original state. Um, so this is something which is an interesting thing you can do using sets. I'll quickly show you. And uh, to be honest, this is not so difficult. 
um, we can try it out. So let's see. Uh, we have a ship date, we'll say. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a set for the ship date. I already have a set, but I'll say, let's say ship date set to. And then I'll say use all. So basically creating a set and then click OK. So I have this ship date set to ready with me. I'll bring in the ship date now. And then I'll make the ship date as exact date. Now I have the ship date. Um, if you like, you can add quantity or you can add profit. So let me add quantity. Wow, this is ready for me. But I don't see that the set is working. I basically need to add a set control. So what I'll do is um, uh, I'll bring the set here. What I'll do is I'll bring the set here to the filters. Now I have it in the filters. Still, it doesn't work. I need to set the actions for this. I'll go to set actions. Click on add actions. Change the set values. Uh, this is the particular sheet which I'm doing. If you'd like to do it on dashboard, you can change this to that specific dashboard if you'd like to. Then you can say select. And then you, you have to select the set which you are working with. Um, I won't use the ship date. This is the previous one. This is the current one which I'm using. Now, when we run the action, so running the action means that when you select the particular date set, what, would, what it will do is it will assign values to the set. And then when you clear the selection, we would want the set to be added with all the values currently in the database or in the, or the, in, in the record or in the system. So we'll click OK. Uh, you can rename the set. I did not rename it for now. So that's how this is ready. The other thing to notice or to notice that you just need to select show members in set and not show in and out of set. So make sure that this part is selected. And then if you go and select this, this zooms in. So this is so simple. I knew that I thought that this is really difficult, but just adding a set makes the user experience so great. And you really, you know, get get that notch where you can say that, okay, now I know a lot of things about Tableau. So yeah, uh, this is how you can play with it. What I had done with those colors is um, I created an average quantity field here. So window average and sum of quantity. So I am just taking an average of the quantity which is present in that specific view at the moment. This is what the calculated field would look like. And then uh, what I'm doing is I'm comparing the quantity with the average quantity. So I'm saying that is the sum of quantity less than the average quantity. And then I'm just, it's just a Boolean. It's a true false. Bring it to the colors and you have your ready. So I already had this. So it's automatically taking those colors. But this is what you can do. You can bring this up here. And this is what it looks like. So yeah, you see this? So you see that, okay, the oranges means for this particular view, uh, these oranges or these data points are below average and the blue ones are the spikes which have the higher um, above average. So that's how you, this works. And yes, that was it from my side. Um, I have these three cases with me. So I, I really learned a lot when I, have um, started working on those cases, uh, got new things to learn as well. So uh, please feel free to explore, reach out to me if you if you have any questions, uh, I'm available and um, I'll be happy to answer your questions. So over to you, Sagar. Hey, thank you for sharing those tips and tricks with respect to dates. I think Thanks. we have some questions. I think I have a question for you, Agatha. Uh, Sorry. So Sneha is asking, uh, can you talk about how you decide to use white spaces in your VIS? So, <laughs> yeah, um, I just, I kind of just experiment. It's a trial and error. Uh, if, you know, there's a, a lot of different, um, 
Tableau public users who are far better designers than I think I will ever be. Um, one of the ones I love to follow is Judith Becker. And if you go to her Tableau public profile, you'll see there's, um, there's a vis she has about um, moon, the moon's phases and it just has so much white space. And I think it really, um, I don't know, it just it, like, it makes you happy looking at it. I think because there's like less going on. So if you just create a vis, I feel like just adding, just play around with just adding more and more white space until until you're happy with how it looks. But I don't have like a exact an exact answer for that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Radha. Uh, Riti, you want to add anything on white space? Um, so I mean, for me, that has always been a question point. Uh, initially, when I started using, it was really difficult to. Uh, understand how the user is wanting to see. So that's one perspective when uh, I vis, I keep it in mind that uh, do I need to see things really close enough or uh, will it be easier for the user to read uh, if they have good space to, you know, uh, adjust and view and what's going on with the text and what's going on with the charts. So that's, that's important. So. Okay. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and put it in the QA or chat window. Happy to answer, ask Agata and Viti. So Sirvi has a question. In your learning phase, when you did not have visit visiting time for a few weeks at a stretch, did you slide back in your learning? How do you maintain consistency with respect to your visits? Maybe we can start with Riddhi and Agata can go next. Uh, so for me, uh, the learning part was um, every day, basically. And to be honest, um, I, I totally agree with you, Sudhi, that this takes a lot of time and it needs a lot of patience. Uh, but the thing is that if you if you are consistent, it may not be it a bigger chart or may not be it a very fancy viz. If you just practice uh, just just two or one or two just charts every day um, and and make it a point that I learn a new feature in Tableau and you know, uh, I learned something new, maybe a new tooltip kind of thing, or maybe a new set action, or maybe a new parameter action. So that's what will keep you going. Uh, you'll realize that if you, if you do it, do one one trick every day, you have 365 day, uh, 365 tricks at the end of the year, and that's not a small thing. So just just make sure that you are doing it in smaller chunks. That's also fine. Um, yes, and I totally agree with Reedy. I think consistency really helps. Um, I, I, I do think it's riding a bike though. Like, I don't think you're going to slide back on your learning. I mean, there's definitely things I've learned. And then I went back to do the same thing and I couldn't remember exactly how to do it. So, it, you know, it takes time and kind of going back as well, but I don't think, I think, um, yeah, I think consistency. Like Reedy said. <laughs> Awesome. And, and there is a follow up question with Sneha. So she's asking, uh, how much design liberty do you guys have at work with respect to business dashboards? And, and this is something which I also face with respect to my customers. Like when we go ahead and meet them, everyone has gone ahead and created cross tabs, right? So any advice, tips and tricks you want to share with them? Um, it's an open question. Yeah, you can uh, maybe Agata, you can start. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I have, I have definitely some room to be creative at work. Um, but, you know, colors and font, um, is pretty standard with what we need to use, which is what I love about the community projects. Um, it really just helps or it, it just really a space for me to be creative. So my Tableau public profile doesn't look like business dashboards, I think at all. Um, just because I, that's the part I do for me. Um, and kind of my space to be more creative. Um, but yeah, at work, do you know, there's definitely less room for creativity, um, but I definitely have some, some space to be creative. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree, uh, Agatha. So, so for me also, um, that's the other thing that um, being creative at work is really difficult. Um, you have certain set charts and certain set best practices which you need to follow when you are in the working environment. They have their own layouts or they have their own styles, their brands, uh, which you need to follow. 
uh, but that's what uh, the Twitter community or that's what these Twitter challenges help us with that uh, we can be ourselves, we can be as creative as we want. And uh, there's no fear of uh, falling down because the community is such great that, uh, you know, you'll always be welcomed and uh, given feedback. It's just that how you take that feedback, I would take or I would consider myself privileged that I get a feedback from somebody. Uh, the user is spending that time and giving me that feedback. So uh, even that's important. So, yeah, uh, that's how creative I can be. Thank you. And, and and just a last question, and this is something I, I want to go ahead and understand from you. What's the role of a mentor in your data visualization and storytelling journey? And why do you think it's important? Uh, Riti, we can start with you and Agatha can follow. Sure. Um, so for me, mentoring was uh, really an important part wherein um, for me, my mentor uh, was really my husband to, uh, to be honest, because um, I have I have always been uh, on the other side of the uh, area where there's no technical stuff which I need to learn. So he has been pushing me and he has been mentoring me that, okay, you know, this is what you can try and this is what you can learn. Though he himself doesn't know a lot of things about Tableau, but he'll be like, uh, you know, this is what you can try and this is what uh, you should learn. Uh, mentors do not always need to uh, be experts in that specific field, but uh, they just need to push you at certain times and, you know, bring you up. So that's what mentoring helps. And if you have any questions, there are always experts around. Uh, there are a lot of blogs, there are a lot of videos. Just Google it and you'll get tons of uh, details and tons of resources so yep yes um i don't know if i've had a mentor per se what i have found that is amazing about this community um as i've gotten more and more involved is that people are so willing to help and provide feedback um and so you know i've, I've started chatting with a bunch of different people and like getting feedback from um different sources so that's been really helpful, but yeah, pretty much anything that I haven't known how to do if you know, you can usually find a blog or video that explains how to do it. Awesome. Thank you. I think with that, thank you, Agatha. Thank you. Riti. I think it was an honor to have you on disconnect. Thank you for inspiring us to participate in Tableau community events. So I, I hope you will go ahead and participate in the next Makeover, Makeover Monday. Uh, you will get the data set on Sunday. Go ahead, participate. And I'm sure you will go ahead and improve in your data visualization and storytelling journey. So with that, have a great weekend ahead. Take care of yourself, be safe, and we will go ahead and see you next week on Friday with other speakers to go ahead and talk about data visualization and storytelling. So yeah, thank you. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks, Agar. Thanks, Agar. Thank you. Bye.